Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to do weldments, also known as beam features, in on shape. And we're going to do a very simple table frame so that way you can learn how to do weldment features. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a basis for our frame. So we're going to go to create, we're going to, go to document, I'm going to call this table stick frame. Okay. We go to on shape. And it gets our user interface like we always are used to seeing, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to draw out the basis for our table frame. So I'm going to start with my front plane here, okay? I'm going to go to sketch. I'm going to go to my front plane orientation. And now I just want to draw a simple H, not H, but like an upside down U pattern. The next thing I want to do is I want to dimension this. I want my legs to be 36 inches tall. Okay, I'm going to zoom out. Okay. And then I'm going to put my other dimension in here for 36. And I'm going to put my other dimension in up here, which is going to be 40 inches. So it's actually going to be three and a half feet long. Okay. Now that I've finished with that sketch, I want to create another sketch to make my other side of my table, okay? So if I'm going to look at this thing in isometric view, okay, it's going to look like this. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create a separate plane that I'm going to put my other sketch on. So I'm going to zoom in to my front plane here. I'm going to zoom out, okay? Then I'm going to click this plane feature, okay? So I'm going to click my little down arrow, and I'm going to go down to plane, okay? My front plane has already been selected, but I want to create my next plane at 72 inches or 6 feet away from my current existing plane. Okay, I'm going to click OK. Now I have my new plane way out here. Now I want to put this sketch on this plane. To do this, I'm going to click my plane. I'm going to go to Sketch. And now I want to do what's called Converting Entities. Okay. So I'm going to click this button right here, okay, use, and now I'm going to click each one of these items, and you're going to notice that they pop up on the plane I just created. If I go back to my front view, you can see they're perfectly in line, okay? But if I go back to my isometric view, you can see they're a distance apart, okay? So now that I have my other half of my table frame done, I'm going to click OK, okay? Now I want to click the top frame for my table. So in order to make the top frame for my table, I have to create a new plane once again. So I'm going to click my top plane here, okay? And then I'm going to go to create a new plane again, okay? And now I'm going to make a new plane that's 36 inches above my existing plane, okay? If I can do that, okay. Do my sketch, okay? I'm going to select my sketch plane there. Now I can draw in my other pieces to go across there and my other piece to go across here, okay? Now I have a three dimensional stick frame. Now, what these are, these are just reference lines. All they are are lines, okay? They mean nothing because there's no thickness to them. I mean, if I zoom into them, they stay the same thickness no matter how far I zoom in or zoom out. They're only lines, there is no thickness to them. I have to turn these lines into individual features, okay? Now, I just did a tutorial a second ago, and unfortunately, I put this in there. So what you're gonna see is you're gonna see this little item here like this, okay? We want to create a custom feature called a beam, also known as a weldment. Okay, to do that, I have to add in the beam feature. So I'm going to click here to add custom features, and I'm going to type in beam feature, just like that. Okay, and now it's going to wait, and the one that I want to use, the one I've been using, is this fourth one down called version 11. Okay, I'm going to click version 11, okay, and then I'm going to double click on the beam feature right here. Notice how it looks like a little eye beam. Double click, okay. Now you'll notice that 
my beam feature is now added, okay? The next thing I wanna do is I wanna start adding in my actual features on my sketch here, okay? So I'm gonna go to beam feature, okay? And this little menu pops up and then it allows me to actually select each item here with a default selection you can see here. The problem is I don't wanna use a two by two by one quarter piece, okay? I wanna make my own custom profile that I can use to make my custom pieces as you can see here. And you can see here, it adds in the angle of iron and it actually looks pretty slick, okay? To do this, I have to create my own weldment profile, okay? So I'm gonna X out of this, okay? I already know my table stick frame, so make sure you've labeled your drawing as table stick frame here, okay? And then, I'm going to go back to my OnShape dashboard and I'm going to create a new document, okay? And this one I'm going to call Angle Iron Profile 1.25 by 1.25, okay? I'm hit OK. It's going to take me back to my main screen here, okay? And then I'm going to draw a sketch on my top plane here. So I'm going to click Top, Sketch. I'm going to go to the top. Now, I want my angle iron to actually be centered on my profile here. So I'm going to start with a center point rectangle. Okay. I'm going to click to make my center point rectangle. Okay. I'm then going to go to my dimension feature. I'm going to make this 1.25 by... Nope, didn't want to do a 90 degree by 1.25. Now I have a one and a quarter by one and a quarter rectangle. Okay. Now in order to make this angle iron, I have to make it an actual L shape. Okay. To do this, I'm going to start by offsetting my current rectangle. So right here we have the offset button. I'm going to click offset and I'm going to click all the features that I want to be offset it. Now, yours may look like that. If yours looks like this, where the offset's going to the outside, you're just going to click the arrow, and it's going to go to the inside. I then want to modify the thickness of my offset. This number right here, the 0.25, is my offset distance. I want that to be 1.25. Okay, sorry. Didn't want to do that. I want that to be 0.125. There we go. All right, that's what I'm looking for with my actual offset distance, okay? I'm gonna finish my offset. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna trim out certain features inside my rectangle here that I will not need, okay? To do that, I'm gonna locate my trim feature, which is, I just saw that. Oh, I gotta go back in my sketch, that's fine, okay? So once I'm back in my sketch, I'm gonna look for my trim feature right here. So I'm going to click trim, okay? I'm going to trim this guy, I'm going to trim that guy. Now I have an L, but it's not the way I want it to be. I want to extend these lines to my next feature. So I'm going to go under the trim feature, I'm going to go to extend, I'm going to click this line to that, and this line to that. There we go, okay? Now I want to trim off my outside one, so I'm going to go back into trim, I'm going to trim here, I'm going to trim there. Now I have a nice looking L angle iron feature that will work the way I want it to. And if you want to get really fancy, you can put some fillets in. I always like doing fillets. Those of you, are, those of you that know me are going to find out really quick that I like filleting everything. So I'm going to make that 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch. Okay, I'm also going to fill it the inside here. So I'm going to go to that one, and that's also going to be filleted, okay? So now my angle iron has a rounded corner on the inside, okay? Now that I've finished my angle iron, or my angle iron profile, I'm going to click the green check. That solidifies my sketch, and that ends it, okay? Now that I've created my profile for my angle iron, I can go back to my stick frame, okay? And now I can start putting in my beam features or weldments, okay? To do this, we loaded our beam feature earlier in case you forgot how to do it. To get to your beam feature, you're gonna go to add custom feature. You're gonna go to 
beam feature. And you're going to load in this guy right here, beam feature V11. Okay, mine already has it. So now I'm going to click on my beam. Okay, and I'm going to start by clicking in my backs of my table here. Okay, now the standard profile is ANSI inch by two by two and a quarter. I don't want to use that, I want to use the one that I just made. To use the one I just made, I'm going to go to Custom, and I'm going to go to Select Part Studio, okay? And under here, there's no current document, so I'm going to go to Other Documents, My On Shape, and then here is where I have my Angle Iron Profile, okay? And you may have to do a couple issues here. And hopefully that works, okay? Because that's what I was able to do and it worked for me, okay? So we can notice here that my angle doesn't quite meet the way that I want it to. So we may have to go to mitering my joints. And when I miter my joints, you'll notice that they get a nice angled cut here the way we want them to look, okay? So the next thing I want to do is I want to green check that. And I want to put in my next beam feature. So I'm going to put in my next beam feature, which will be on this leg, okay? But notice how it's going the wrong way, okay? It's facing outside of my frame here, okay? I want to rotate this 180 degrees. Notice that's not far enough, okay? So I'm actually going to want to go 270 degrees, and now it's where I want it to be. Now it's angled the way that I want it to be angled on the inside here. Next, I'm going to select the rest of my features. So select that one, select that one. I'm going to go to miter my joints. And now hopefully it looks just like the other side does. Come on, there we go. On the inside of my weldments here and everything. Okay, now this isn't perfect. So what I'm probably going to have to do here so I'm probably going to have to delete my first one, okay, and then go to reinsert it because it wasn't lining up the way that I wanted it to, okay. So I'm going to go back in, I'm going to select my angle iron, okay, and you'll notice here, now when I look at this, it's still angled on the outside. So it's just going to have to be angled on the outside for now. And I'm going to miter it. Okay. And actually, you can move this in a little bit if you want. Hopefully, it didn't go for me. Well, hopefully you said more luck than I do then. Okay. So hopefully, your sketch is lined up with the outside of your beam feature here. Okay. The last thing I want to do is I want to put in the top of my frame. To do that, I'm going to go to Beam Feature once again. I'm going to click this one. Now we notice that it's not where I want it to be, so I'm going to rotate this 180 degrees. I guess on the inside. I'm then going to click the next Beam Feature and the next one. And the last one on the inside here, which you can't really see very well, but it is definitely there. Hopefully I can rotate it around so you can actually see it. Anyway, it's there. And so now when I finish this, my table doesn't look quite right because it goes to the inside here and I didn't want to go to the inside. But for our purposes here, I'm just going to leave it the way that it is so it'll work the way I want it to. Okay. The last thing I want to do is create a drawing of this. To create a drawing of this, the same thing we've always done. I'm going to go to insert a new element. And the way I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to do this is the way that I want you guys doing this all in the future. Okay. We're going to, my bad, right click on Part Studio and we're going to go to, no, I had it right. Insert new element, create drawing. Okay. I'm going to create drawing. I'm going to show all the templates. We can see here we have a ANSI inch. Okay. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to do no views, okay, 
Uh, I'm going to move my little screen window here. Okay. Hopefully this works because it's been really slow. And we can see here it's giving me all the individual parts, which I don't want. I want the whole thing. Okay. So I want to put the whole thing in front. And the side and the top. And I'm not going to do a top right now. The reason why I'm not going to do a top right now is because I want to show you guys a broken out view here in a second. Okay. So, what I want to do is I want to show you guys a section view and a broken out section. Or sorry, a detail view. Okay. So, I'm going to do a broken out section. Sorry, a section view first. Okay. And that's going to be horizontal. So my section view here. Okay. And that will give me my section view up here. Unfortunately, it's going to be off the page. Okay. That's not what I wanted to do. So I'm going to undo that. And instead, I'm just going to show you guys the detail view. Okay, so I'm going to show you a detailed view of this corner right here. Okay, I'm going to move my detailed view up here for now, where my top view should go. And you notice how my detailed view shows a detailed view of our area here, which shows that it has multiple features going on there. The reason I'm showing you the detailed view is because you're going to need this for upcoming projects. You're going to not for this one we have coming up right now, but for upcoming projects we're going to have later on. Okay. So no, make, sure, make sure you know how to do the detail view, okay? I'm going to add in a few dimensions, okay, 36. I don't know why it says that. Oh, because it goes to the inside there, okay? I can also go from the outside to the outside, and that gives me an even longer measurement because it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, okay? And then we also want to change up our names. So we can go in here. And we can change in, say, uh, table frame. Okay. You can check that. And we also want to go in here. We want to put your name in there, uh, drawn by C. White. Okay. Make sure that you include information in your drawings, like your name and the project name. And then revision number, like here, you'd actually include like revision number one, or it'd be actually rev zero. Rev zero, because we haven't done any zero other revisions of this yet. Okay. So this is what you'll do. This is what you'll submit in. Okay. You'll finish the rest of your dimensions on this thing. And this is what you'll want to show for your final project, your final submittal. Okay. That's it for now, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.